transformation design framework. So how we can pull out of the behavioral science some insights that we can apply to technology design to achieve a behavioral change into organizational setting, but also beyond that. So it speaks about how, to, how can we not only have a temporary behavior change, but we can sustain it, which I call transformation and apply it to management and organizational settings. So first of all, it starts with simplifying what change means. And there are three types of change. So on the left hand side, we see the transaction. So that's the tiniest change we can achieve. That's a one time. It's like an exchange something. So it's a transaction. We give something and receive something, but that's very unsustainable. So therefore we need to look for a longer period of time. And if you look for a longer period of time, that is called transition. And that means for a month or for a year, we comply with a certain behavior and then see what the results are. But usually people just stick for a period of time and then give up. So therefore we need to distinguish the third type of change, which is transformation. And transformation means the same kind of a perspective, which is a period of time, but then we remove the endpoint, which is usually the trap, and then it's kind of for forever. And then you see on the top corners with the reference to the carrots and sticks, it's more like a created, it's artificial to our human nature. And then actually the, on the other side, there are these people, which I refer to a social influence. So if we harness the motivation from other people and the positive examples, that's more humane and more uh, rooted into our nature. So moving on, the next fundamental tool that we could use to start projecting the transformation is transformation vector. What does it mean? If we want to keep on progressing in the desired direction, whether that's a organizational change towards more hyper-performance, whether that's organizational change towards minimizing the burnouts at work, whatever that is, there has to be very clear perspective. The green vector is the transformation vector. And if we keep going, we, we get where we want. But then there can be times when the people move away and that's uh, the yellow and the red, which is usually not leading to where the organizations want to get. So this here will be just an illustration where People would say, oh, I'm going to do, I'm going to continue. But then you see this green thing went on the vector, but then it moved away like one day. People have the excuse why they don't do it. And therefore, what is in reality, it happens. The vectors explain, and this is geometry. You cannot get where you want to get if you're stepping away from your road, from your chosen path. And this is vectoral transformation, which explains how to sustain the change. And here, once we start implementing the sustainable change, which means transformation. This is a framework. This is a transformation design framework, which has eight applicable tools. They all are a combination of the deep social sciences, behavioral sciences, and then they are simplified so that we can apply it to our organizational context. And it starts with triangle. That's actually comes from Albert Bandura from Stanford University, psychology lab, which explains that there is an interconnection bet between what people think, what people do and the environment. The next is curve, which is explaining that there is a dimension. So the, the attitude can be low or high, or the environment can be easy or hard to, to, to change. And therefore behavior really happens when there is a good balance between the attitude and, and the environment. The next is metric. So there has to be some technical measurement that we are tracking throughout our journey. So we actually are able to see if the change is happening and change is moving to the direction that we have chosen. Circles is a tool that explains that there usually are three major groups of people and their predisposition towards that change. Some people agree and they say, yes, I, I already wanted that. There are red people who are against and they would be resisting change. And then the yellow people are these as I call them January 1st people, they want to change, but not always successful. And then after these four, we have understood the context and where we want to go. And then from the fifth, we start to design. And then we have the architecture. So we have the data input, which is a raw data from the technology intelligence, where we have the big data analytics and tools like that to understand what kind of people and behaviors we have. And then the transformation where we design the feedback loops. And then the sixth tool is uh, Socium. So here we use a social influence and different sub-dimensions of that into technology design to achieve the transformation. Tool number seven is moderation, which means not always we will have positive other people 
present so that we can harness this motivation. So we need to be very mindful. And the, the last one is ethics, which speaks about that not always there is a good intent behind the design. Sometimes there can be bad intent, but sometimes without even thinking about something bad, but also actually planning for something good, there can be a backfire that we might not be aware of when we start designing the system. And here, let me give you a practical example. So on these two images, you see there is litter. We were thinking how to empower people not to litter on the streets. And then the idea was let's convert every litter as a lottery ticket. So, and then there will be the smart bins. So I will explain how that design framework is applied to this particular case. So for example, now we start with the transaction. So if there would be a littering fee, so if somebody catch you that you litter and you pay a fine, that's a one transaction and you might not just continue doing that. And if there is a reward, there is this lottery ticket, which is you, you might feel good about it. You might have a chance to win, which is a transition. So as long as you, you are in the lottery, you might feel good about it. And the last one is really about how we can create something more engaging for people. And I will explain how we can achieve that by applying the framework that I just explained before. So first we will start with the transformation vector, which means in this case, the green vector was not littering. And now we apply the tool number one, which is triangle. If the attitude of people is litter is just a waste, and the environment is that there are no such smart bins that would prov provide these lottery tickets. Then people might just throw their litter on the street and they would be just doing it habitually. And the next tool, if we apply, then why the behavior is not happening? Behavior is not happening under the curve. And under the curve, there's the attitude very low and there is there are no smart there's bins around that would give you the lottery tickets. So people just might throw the litter on the ground and then if we improve the attitude increase the attitude and then we'll think oh actually every piece of litter is a lottery ticket and there are smart bins they were less likely to throw the litter on the ground they would throw the litter into the bin to get their lottery ticket so this is how we shift the perspective and explain in the tool number two tool number three is what we actually going to measure and it starts with the left upper corner who are the target group that are city dwellers let's say it's a city and it's a certain urban, urban context what they presently are doing they're throwing litter anywhere and in the future we would like them to throw the litter in the literary bins and the measurement is the litter collected from the bins versus from the ground because the municipality responsible people are collecting both anyways so you can follow the percentage from the litter from the ground and the litter from the bins. And today there will be 70% from the bins and then it will be increase of the 20% after a year. That would be a significant increase after the implementation. We look at the resisting people, they are always with litter and they will not change. And then the green ones that they never litter and they always use. But then for these people in the middle who are not really kind of intentionally willing to litter they are not red and they are also not really green so not they kind of this have this habit of sometimes and therefore this is our target group we want these yellow people to join the green people the next is architecture and in this case that would be those smart bins that collect data and they use artificial intelligence to recognize whether that's a proper litter to in that bin whether that's a glass whether that's a plastic and whether that's something else so the real-time data is streaming from these bins so we have this real-time understanding of what is collected the intelligence layer is about recognizing how much there is a new litter coming in and calculating these circles so how many people and how maybe there are more green people already emerging in the neighborhood and then the transforming would be different ways how we can project really in the urban space so that people be, will be aware of this, these behaviors of other people. From the social influence, there are the seven main dimensions, how individuals change what they think and do based on others. So social learning, so people observe others doing and they learn comparison, how we compare our behavior with the behavior of others, social norms, quite popular facilitation so people get this extra motivation doing together with others cooperation if there is a goal to achieve competition if there is a some kind of a reward then people want to achieve that and recognition people enjoy if they're recognized for the good behavior 
And let's look how those can be designed. So you see this urban context and there is this bin in the green color and that's the smart bin. And then there's this billboard and the billboard can be used for projecting different designs. And this one is about social learning. So it says, depending on how well you perform, the bins can change the color. So if you're poorly performing, it's red. If you're average, then it's yellow. And if you're great performing, then it's green. Comparison, there could be this map on the billboard and depending on how the neighborhoods perform, if some of the neighborhoods perform better, they are greener in the bigger bin on the map. And if some of the other neighborhoods are not that well, so they are smaller and yellow or red. Social norms that will be projecting how many people on average or what's the size of the group that are actually performing well. In this case, 80%. And there are these 20% that are yellow or red. A facilitation. Uh, this means about how actively people are doing this behavior around different neighborhoods that you can see the map and the activity that is just presently today around this week and it's happening. Then cooperation. You can imagine every liter that you throw in the bin is actually adding one Lego brick to this tower. So you build together, you cooperate. There can be competition. So you see different neighborhoods and their space grows, depends on how active is the neighborhood. And then the other neighborhoods are smaller in size and smaller in font. So you, you feel where you are in competition. And then recognition. So if there's a good performer, then there can be a special title given or the recognition of the win. And you can see that the litter bin is light up as well. And then the tool number seven, after we've done the implementation, we have to be very careful that there might be uh, sometimes a day when everybody is littering on the street and that would be giving through that system a perspective that actually most of the people are doing the red behavior and we don't want that. So the tool number seven explains that we should put some thresholds and to stop uh, projecting the, the wrong behavior if that happens. And the last one, the number eight is here in this corner, we are designing this to engage people in using the litter bins because it's better for everyone. But there can be a situation where there's a positive unintended outcome purchase, for example, unpackaged products. So they don't need the package to, to be thrown anywhere. And the negative unintended, we call backfires. So sometimes people might sabotage the whole idea and they throw the litter intentionally because they don't, they don't like the idea. But this is something that is into our partially our psychology. We have to know that. And then this dark corner, dark patterns is if somebody would like to get more benefit for themselves, like the owner of the system and take away from the users that will be manipulating the lottery algorithm. And to conclude, I would like to give you three practical examples where the framework, this transformation design framework was implemented. And this one is from MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It was uh, five years ago where there were 14 companies and we looked how they commute to work and back. We looked at those who ride bikes and then we arranged the companies based on their ridership in these rankings. And these rankings we asked as you see in the background on the screens in the offices. And there was a great engagement for six weeks and 240 people were participating and they together rode almost 30,000 miles to the work and back in six weeks. This is another example where we introduced this framework. And the challenge was that in this kiosk, people can measure some of the health vitals, for example, weight and blood pressure. And the problem was people could use anonymously, but it would be benefit for the users and for the company if there would be more account holders. So we introduced this AB design. And for the, some of the kiosks, there was this message where when people enter their age and gender, then they re retrieve from the data how many other similar people having the account have improved and that increased the conversion rate. Conversion rate from anonymous users to account holders and for the total group it increased for the 20 percent the conversion rate and the, for the specific subgroup of who would be caring more about their weight than the blood pressure so it was the increase of conversion rate for 32 percent and this is the last example where there was this uh, traditional behavior in the organizations where people are late to the meetings and that was the challenge and here you can see there are in the graph there are seven meetings and in the first meeting there were 65 percent of people on time and after the fifth meeting there were 100 percent of the people on time and you see on top this was the reflection that was 
real time given in every meeting to every person through the screen that is in a meeting room. So everyone, every person could see themselves and their bars. And you see there is a red thing on the top which says this is this is a total number of meetings. And then you see some of the people have all the colored blocks up until that mark. But some people miss some of the color. And this is when they came late. <laughs> and this is how simple instant reflection about the behavior of yourself and others can trigger people to change how they behave. And this, in this particular case, in the organizational setting, people coming late to the meetings. And this was the implementation, as simple as that. So there was a computer and there was uh, this possibility to mark who is on time and who is late. And there's the screen. And, and this is how quite simply it can be implementable in many organizational contexts using the technologies that are presently in the organizations to achieve behavioral changes and then to sustain them. Mm -hmm.